Good morning and welcome to another technical presentation brought to you by Tom Zaleski, Matrix Dental Laboratory and Consulting. If you'd like to know more about me or reach me via the internet or on a landline, here's my contact information. I have a website, you can learn a little bit more about me there. Lots of great technical articles you can download. You can also contact me at LinkedIn, type in Tom Zaleski, Thomas Zaleski, or you can find me on Facebook. Got a lot of action going on over there. Uh, just type in Zaleski Removable Prosthetics. Join my page. Let's share some ideas and you can take a look and see what I'm up to. What I'm up to today is I'm talking about Proform e-gasket material. It's a product that I've been using for some time now and have found it to be very beneficial. It's a very long-term product. Uh, as opposed to some of the other products I've used in the past which were more shorter term. Um, not to take anything away from those products but if you want something that's going to be more definitive this is a product that I can recommend. It's a thermal formed gasket material. In other words it's used in a vacuum former. Um, this is a picture of the product here. It comes in pink and clear and uh, we're going to go through the technique and uh, I'm going to explain a little bit how to use it and we'll go from there. So some of the features, as I mentioned earlier, one of the big ones, chemically bonds to acrylic. Uh, one of the biggest difficulties one has with uh, some of the alternate methods for gasketing teeth, remaining dentition, is that they tend to debond from the acrylic. Uh, this material bonds quite nice chemically to acrylic, so you don't get the typical delamination you would get from the silicone type products. It's also a closed cell material versus an open cell material, closed cell meaning that it's impervious to more stain and to uh, discoloring, odor, those types of things where open cell material, which would be like your silicone, obviously is exposed to those types and environmental type things that tend to degrade the material to the point where it breaks down. It also hardens most of your uh, silicone material either tears or some of the hybrid materials tend to harden over a period of time due to the fact that the leaching of plasticizers. Um, this product also is vacuum formed so there's a snap fit that's possible depending on how much undercut you engage. Um, you can get a very nice snap fit. Comes in clear and pink. Um, I use the clear some like to use the pink. I mean, it's going to still be obvious that there's a space between teeth because you have to have a gasket around uh, the, the existing teeth that you're gasketing, but some prefer the clear, some prefer the pink. Here it is uh, just to show you a model and then the end result, just to give you an idea where we're going to go with this. It's called a dual laminate. By the way, there are other dual laminate materials out there come in thicker sizes that can be used for a host of other types of applications where you would like to um, have acrylic adhere to it. Uh, we can talk about those at a later date on another video. To vacuum form the product, I recommend a good vacuum former. Um, the one I'm recommending nowadays, the one I'm using, is the machine from uh, Proform. Uh, Keystone Industries. It's a, a nice machine that has a ton of features that uh, previous machines didn't have and I'll just run through it real quick because this is more about the e-gasket and less about the machinery but in order to get a good vacuum forming it is also critical to have a good uh, a good machine. It's gasketless, no more of those burning the gaskets here around the frame which is is great. Uh, it has a locking platform. This platform goes up and down and locks in any position along the way in relevance to the uh, coil. And that's great because as we heat um, thinner or thicker materials, we want the heat source to be closer or further away from the material uh, in order to gauge the correct temperature to form. Uh, this one's lightweight, has this nice resin base, has these sealed membrane switches which we took away the toggle switches. It has some nice safety features in the fact that once you press the vacuuming it automatically turns the heat off and so forth. Um, and the uh, real nice benefit that I like about this, the, the one that I like mentioning, is this en enhanced vacuum platform which has raised dimples uh, allows the vacuuming uh, area underneath the model to occur which increases the vacuum performance. Again, 
look into a good machine and again you know for all of these types of products to work you have to have good technique so um, just quickly you would like to survey block out the master model and then duplicate it uh, you'll be working off a duplicate with the blocked out undercut some prefer to leave a lot of undercut some prefer to have uh, a little undercut really depends on what's available and you go from there now you have a choice when you're going to vacuum form over the duplicate and you can either vacuum form the entire arch or you can vacuum form segments um, if you're going to be doing more than one case and you want to try to stretch the material I can recommend that you would take and uh, you'd have to make a secondary duplicate but you could then cut the areas off of your main arch that you're going to be vacuum forming because you're going to be making little copings on the top of these and um, if you wanted to arrange several more if you had three or four cases and you wanted to see if you could you know stretch the usage of the material I you I can recommend that you could cut the segments and do them individually uh, placed all around the platform rather than trying to put two arches on the platform which won't work but nonetheless you can see I've also using two different vacuum forming methods I have a circular vacuum former which is your air vac and then I also have the machine that I'm recommending for mechanical vacuum forming which is the uh, Proform Model 4 okay so uh, anyways you would place the material on your um, on your platform uh, and then you would begin heating it uh, to get it to the state where a lot of guys talk about droop uh, I talk about tactile feel more than droop because tactilely you want the material to be soft enough to vacuum form but by the time it starts to droop you begin to stretch the material out because the further it droops obviously the more it's going to stretch the thinner it's going to be and I tend to uh, uh, vacuum form when it just begins to sag rather than droop and I'm always touching the underside of the material to make sure it's at the state that I want to pull it at again it's a judgment call and you'll have to experiment with it but I will tell you if you're looking for a visual indication many times it's way too late and always remember to preheat your coil before you swing it over the material to begin heating the e-gasket material because if you're trying to bring that coil up to heat at the same time you're heating the material it's very difficult to judge when it's ready to pull so again build a baseline of heat in your coil then bring your coil over the material and then form while it's vacuum forming it's critical that you flatten the creases in many cases where you have abutments with an edentulous area between them you're going to get a like a little crease it kind of stands up while the materials hot and while it's vacuum forming I take a rounded instrument and I form it or push it down because I don't want to have a crease in here I want this to be adapted at the inner proximals as well so be cognizant of that and be ready to to flatten and help that to form the take out the crease and form it to the interproximals as best you can because you want to have a nice uh, coping because you're going to be basically taking this material and trimming trimming away all the excess and leaving just the form that covers that tooth so then you'll cut and trim away from the uh, sheet of material once it's cooled and, and you've taken it off of the the model and you're you're going to trim it and 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 basically you're going to have a a junction try to come as close as you can well come to the to the base of the model at the bottom here uh, you don't want it to be short because you don't want hard acrylic to run up underneath and lock in an undercut in that regard so you want to keep it well adapted to the base of the model so so what I say is trim to the gingival cowl and remove the skirting to eliminate uh, difficult adjacent tooth placement what I mean by skirting is if the material spreads out like this you're gonna have a skirt there and that's gonna get in the way of you setting a tooth in this in this regard right here and you wanna make sure that it comes to a it comes to a junction at the cowl and that it's well adapted and this way when you go to place your tooth you're not gonna have less space to set your tooth at okay so remember that tooth setting considerations now you can do it a bunch of different ways I just show this as examples uh, you could set each tooth individual but it means taking this on and off because this is going to get in the way of your occlusion what I like to do is um, 
I like to set the tooth, even though it's high, and get the indice of where that tooth's going to be. And I would do that all the way around, then come back, and then I would trim the tooth to get it. Uh, and I would take these copings off, and I would trim the um, tooth until I could close it in occlusion all the way around and set the teeth. Then I would replace these back on top to make sure that you know that it, it fits and there's the space that's required for the gasket material to be at either side of the of the proximal uh, areas okay so again you know I would get the indice in the wax do it all the way around first forget about the occlusion just get the tooth position in, in relevance to the adjacent tooth then come back and then then take these off and then begin setting these teeth using these indices against an articulated upper okay interproximal coping space is what I call it but you gotta make sure that you have these indices because once you take these off then you'll you'll have to set the tooth in relevance you're gonna be putting these back on so if you do need a little space um, and I've been known to do it I'll take a little carbide just take a little bit off the interproximal tooth just so I can slide it over the top again but this gets in the way if you're if you're um, gonna try to set the case tooth for tooth man you'll be taking this thing off and on forever so like I said again indice first set the tooth second okay. see here's the indice here's the space see there you've got that coping over the top of it so now you have your occlusion with space see these are set now after the fact I'll have the space everything now is set in occlusion I would have an opposing model I just do this as an example for example sake it's a lot easier to do it this way for example sake but you see the space is allowed for that coping that's going to go back on so you'd set all these set all these and then go back put the copings back and then wax it final there's your space from a from a uh, uh, occlusal overhead you can see the space is there the teeth are now set where they're supposed to be then once the teeth would be all set and I just show you here because I put one on either side but you could literally set the whole case this way then go back slide this over now if you find there's some resistance here again you could take a little bit off the interproximal of that tooth I don't recommend taking it off the gasket because you have to have a somewhat some sponginess there because that gasket is what's sliding over the undercut and you do want to make it too thin because then it would become too rigid so I would I would borrow from the adjacent denture tooth okay then once they're in place I'd wax I wax it all in final get it to where I want it to be uh, and then go with my processing technique that works best for me for me that would be uh, the flask te technique. Um, there'll be others out there that'll use pour and others. The point is whenever you do any of the uh, mold adaption with acrylic you want to make sure you leave the copings on at all times because you don't want anything to run up underneath. That's the key. So for me it would be boil it out which I did here and then I would replace the thimble copings back on top I would soften the wax only to the point of being able to open the flask. You don't want to subject these to a great deal of heat because they will deform. You know, you just want enough that you can open the flask. You should be doing that way anyways because the fact of the matter is that if you let the wax get too liquidous, it soaks into your model and then you never get it out because you'd have to have a subsurface surfactant to remove the oils that are in the wax. So again, soften the wax only to the point of being able to open the flask, then pull the copings from the model, clean everything out real good with, um, uh, we'll clean out your mold first with, with a really uh, a dental specific type of mold cleaner, ultra wash or something of that nature. Um, then uh, put the copings back on top. I, I actually take a little bit of monomer wax solvent or something of that nature probably not monomer probably wax solvent the monomer if you get it on this point it's gonna fog it it won't make a difference so you could use monomer but the fact of the matter is you want to get all the wax residue off there as best as possible and then replace your copings and then what I do is I wet it with Palabond um, or Vitacol you could use either one um, the point is that you want to get some solvent action going on there so that you get a good adherence when you pack press the case. Again, for pack pressing, then it's just a matter of leaving these on. And I do a split sheet type packing. I put acrylic on this side 
and then I have the sheet on and I put acrylic on the tooth side so when I close it I basically have acrylic adapted here on this side of the mold and then acrylic adapted to the intaglios of the teeth and then when I'm ready for the final I'll leave a little I'll put a little extra material in here and then I'll close it final but the fact is that um, by doing uh, and, and again uh, while you're packing you also want to make sure that you go short to long fill short and then continue to add acrylic rather than try to squeeze a big bulk and then continue to re-squeeze that bulk and trim because every time you re-squeeze that bulk of material it's trying to drive itself underneath that coping and it's always better anyways to short pack to long where you start to get um, the land the uh, land area starts to get some flash that's that's most crucial anyways at that point uh, you close it final process and finish it and finishing is nothing more than taking a little scalpel and cutting the tops of the copings off and uh, using some rubber wheels just for the interface along the top to get it smooth um, and that should do it finish with the scalpel I just take and cut that and uh, and then you know polish and finish uh, like you ordinarily would um, some people have asked me, do you put some sealant or some sort of gloss sealant or something on there? I don't. I guess you could. I don't know. I, I, I just don't do it. Hey, it's a gasket, you know. It's going to be saliva all over it. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 you know, it's just a gasket. It's, it's, it, if you're trying to look for some sort of aesthetic appeal there, I don't know how well it's going to come off. I mean, you're still going to see the gasket. So, if you want to put some sealant on there and you think you can get away with it, give it a try. I don't know, but I think if this flexes and you have like a hard sealer on there, I believe what will happen is it will just flake off. Okay. Just another view. You know, today in today's market, we're looking for all kinds of different ways that we can offer services for patients who, hey, let's face it, don't have insurance or don't have any cash uh, to pay for it out of pocket, and they're always looking for alternative ways. Uh, I never recommend gasket type of uh, appliances uh, long term, although they tend to end up being that way. Um, it's a short term provisionalization type of situation, I believe, until somebody has more money to afford a, a better treatment but again with that being said uh, in today's market we have to be able to offer a variety of things and uh, at least with this material unlike the silicone materials um, your servicing of something that is typically a lower cost item isn't going to nickel and dime you to death with repairs because the bond is, is great to the acrylic they don't break down and they don't stain like the silicone ones so you can get some nice life out of it again you know we have to offer uh, alternatives and there it is final on the front end again just a little picture to show you anyways um, this is this is, is that it, this is the way it is done um, the technique um, I'm sure that there'll be guys out there that'll think of different and better ways to do it this is just my spin and hopefully you'll give the material a shot and uh, all the best. Thanks for tuning in today and I hope to see you again.